Hey there, welcome to LSAT Demon Daily. I'm Ben Olson, that's Nathan Fox. We're the founders of LSATdemon.com and our weekly podcast, Thinking LSAT. We have an email here from Dee Dee. Hi, Ben and Nathan. I was listening to the recent podcast episode where you guys talked about being too confident when taking the test and making errors in the process. I definitely felt this applied to me. I constantly oscillate between feeling really good when taking my practice sections and having a defeatist mindset when I'm not scoring how I want. Usually when I feel really good about my practice test and think that I am making more making progress in my journey, I find that I missed a lot more questions than when I thought I would. So clearly describing overconfidence. For context, I'm scheduled to take the April 2025 LSAT. I'm currently scoring in the upper 150s and want to score in the mid to low 170s. I'm taking it day by day, but considering canceling my test registration if I don't get closer to where I want in February. I'm a firm believer that mindset can make a difference here, but I worry that I'm guilty of the overconfidence you guys talked about in the recent podcast. I'm trying to find a balance between feeling defeated and being overconfident. Any advice? Thanks. Dee Dee. So Dee Dee says, I'm a firm believer that mindset can make a difference here. I agree that mindset can make a difference, but I still would much rather you just continue to focus on learning. Yeah. The real way to get better here is to just seek out things you don't understand when you do drilling, when you do time sections, when you do tests. And as you learn those things, your real confidence, your underlying confidence will grow. And that will result in a positive mindset, but it's because you actually know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, you're you're getting a lot of false positives in your results here where you're like, oh, I did good. I, I got that one right. I, I understood that one. Well, your overall score indicates that you're understanding some, uh, but not all and maybe not even most of mm-hmm. the work you're doing. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're if you're scoring in the upper 150s you're missing quite a few questions and you're also getting quite a few questions right that you didn't really understand. So you need to, you know, I don't know, maybe stop thinking about mindset so much. Like, why are you even assessing how good you're feeling during your practice section? Why are you even noticing that? It isn't relevant. No, what's relevant is the words on the page. Are you understanding the passage. Are you understanding the question that they're asking you about that passage? Are you understanding how the four wrong answers are wrong? And are you understanding how the right answer is right? Like it actually answers the question that you were asked based on the record that you were presented. Yeah. And if you don't, that's okay. Cause then when the section is over or whatever you're doing is over, that's an opportunity to learn. Like, go figure it out. You can yeah. figure it out. But I, I don't care about your confidence level. No. Nope. I care whether you chose the right answer. And I especially care how often you chose the wrong answer. Whether you confidently chose the wrong answer or unconfidently chose the wrong answer. I don't really care so much. What I care about is you literally did not understand the record that you read or the question that you read about that record or the wrong answer that you chose, or the right answer that you didn't choose, or some combination of all four of those things, you're just not understanding what you're reading. So as much as mindset is important, and you know, I want you to approach each test and each question with a, a focused, you know, positive mindset. I mean, gratitude can go a long way. You know, you're, you all are very lucky to be studying the LSAT. I hope that you realize that you're more fortunate than the vast majority of people who are living today. (laughs) And you're definitely more fortunate than the vast majority of humans who have ever lived. Mm -hmm. You know, you are richer, safer, more comfortable by far than everybody else who's ever lived. Okay. (laughs) So, you know, starting your day with that or starting your practice section with that to go, yeah, I'm pretty lucky to be here. You know, all I got to do is just read carefully and understand these questions and try to solve them. That's, that's good. I'm glad you're, I'm glad you're feeling confident. Yeah. But then 
From there, the only thing I really care about is whether you did or did not solve that question. And every question you miss is a, is a question that you didn't solve. So start taking like, you know, we go back to our universal advice here, right? For DD, do mm -hmm. fewer questions with higher understanding. Do fewer questions, but actually do the work to solve them. Because this, you know, I felt really good, but then I looked at my results and I was surprised how bad they were. Well, okay, that means that you're not actually solving the questions. You're just doing a bunch of work and you feel great. So, oh yeah, gotta be B. I'm not even gonna read C, D, and E. <laughs> I had a question last night in my class. I read A, I was telling the class, seems like this is it. I was confident enough that I was like, I'm actually gonna click A, and then I'm just gonna read B, C, D, E to make sure. Confidently eliminate B, confidently eliminate C, confidently eliminate D, read E. Wait a second. That says the exact same thing that A said. <laughs> yeah. Reread A. No, E does not say the exact same thing that A said. Actually, A was backward. A was the opposite. It was the reverse of what I was looking for. Mm -hmm. You know, I was looking for A causes B. That answer said B causes A. Yeah. And if I would have been so confident, I would have just picked A, not even read the rest of those answers and moved on. But, you know, you have to be like happy and optimistic, but at the same time, you have to be humble enough to go, well, I think my main parachute is appropriately packed here. But just in case, I'm also going to have this backup parachute, mm -hmm. you know, and that's being careful enough to actually read all five answers. So if that if that experience, like if I'm having that experience and by the way, you know, I got 15 years worth of LSAT teaching under my belt since I scored 179. Yeah. OK, <laughs> so 179 on my official LSAT in 2007. Oh, I guess that was 17 years ago. Professional LSAT teaching since then, not only that, but the questions that we were doing last night, I had seen those questions a million times before. Yeah. So if anyone was ever going to be overconfident, if anyone has justification to be overconfident or be very confident, it's me. And yet, if I would have been too confident there and taken a shortcut of not reading all five of those answers and not taking it seriously and not being open to the possibility that I might be wrong, then I would have missed that question. So, you know, someone who's scoring in the upper 150s, trying to get to 170s, you need to be cautious. <laughs> you can be you can be happy and, and optimistic, but you also need to take the time to actually solve the question. Agreed. Should we wrap it up there? Yeah, we should. Thanks, Didi. Email daily at LSATdemon.com if you'd like to ask us a question or share some LSAT or law school admissions news. Thanks for listening.